Hello, hello, everybody. It's your Prof Chop, and we're back again with some more historical content. Okay, this is a video by Historically, the shortest war ever. Let's check it out. I don't think I've heard Facts about this one, but there's a fun. lot of wars. Welcome to the late 19th century. Late and 19th welcome century. To Great Britain. Oh, the lands of God. Industri when it, what do you mean, welcome to Great Britain? That's pretty much half the planet at that point, isn't it? Revolution, God damn it. The land of economic opportunities and the yeah. land of overcrowded cities. Oof. With many, many rats. Hey, the rats. You know what else Britain has Skaven? many of? Colonies. How many? Yeah. Very many. Pretty much half the goddamn world. I wasn't even joking. Look at this. They got a whole ass India. Australia. I'm pretty sure Australia, this is incorrect. Because I think at that point I was like, here, 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 a little bit here, and a little bit here. Everything else here was like untouched. <laughs> but Approximately yeah. Kind of candles, kind of like that as well. Earth's area. It's the biggest empire that the world has ever seen. And within that humongous empire is a small island called Zanzibar. Wait, I just noticed that was a map of current history, not 1800th history. Like, Bulgaria did not exist back then. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, like, we just were, off the coast not of yet. Tanzania, Zanzibar was the trade we're center still of the, in the Indian Ocean, connecting African indian and asian traders oh, all in one spot. Good spot this made the island crucial for the british colonists as it strengthened their position in the african trading world but that wasn't the sole reason the british wanted the island Why there was want... also slavery oh shit. No, no 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 the british didn't want to establish it they wanted to abolish it yeah. around the year 1800 the british had a change of uh, for some reason they went from hey yo we gotta own all them peoples to we gotta own zero of them peoples technically you know Arts and decided that maybe tearing families apart why did they do that i have no idea across the world to work till they die of exhaustion wasn't that humanitarian yeah so after I, a listen i highly doubt they did that just because they wanted to be more humanitarian if they did that just because they want to be more human humanitarian good on them but I kind of doubt Good that. old talk with abolitionists like Thomas Clarkson, Grenfell Sharp, and William Wilberforce. They decided that slaves these. are indeed also human. And passed a law that made it illegal crazy, to have bro. slaves in the Great British Empire. Mm. This simultaneously resulted in a new spark in the hearts of the British people. We shall free the world of slavery and have every man, and later on maybe also women, made equal. This That's why they had a lot of problems with um, Brazil back in the day. This brings us back to Zanzibar. Slaves. Turns out, yeah. just because the British quit slavery doesn't mean the local sultan and many traders <laughs> settled in Zanzibar did themselves as yeah. well. And that About was a that. problem for the British, as slavery is very inhuman mm. and not allowed because of the British law. Mm -hmm. Now, the easy way to deal with this problem is to immediately force every trader and wealthy person on the island to give up their main source of income. So the I mean, listen, it's an island. It's the British. They got the navy to beat everybody else up so it wouldn't be hard at all the island would no longer be Plus illegal a small but that has a slight side effect of rebelling and guerrilla warfare yeah and we wouldn't what want has to that ever stopped you though in a war, come on would we? <laughs> this brings us to the second less rebellious option which is admiral harry rawson Admiral Rawson, Rawson was the chief of command at the cape of good hope station in southern africa cape of good hope Africa, yeah, which meant sure. that he was the head of the British fleet responsible for the waters around the African countries. Damn, it's a what lot if of instead waters. of making slave trading illegal, we just sent multiple ships patrolling the seas around East Africa to intercept any incoming slave ships, effectively causing slave trading to come... Just isolate the island. Yeah, that's gonna suck for the rich slavers. So good. ...to halt good. without Fuck coming off. across as evil colonists. Sounds like a smart plan, actually. But I mean, okay, that's the not common from that. Pretty much anything they do, they're gonna be seen like that because they are if like that. They could. When Britain acquired Zanzibar, it's not like they walked into the palace of the Sultan and said, hey man, we want to set up a colony here so we can get richer. <laughs> do you consent to this very one sided agreement? <laughs> no. It went more like this Hey Germany. Ah, scheiße. What was the German colony <laughs> oh, first? Great Britain. I heard you're also trying to set up colonies in Africa. Yes, my dear friend. And I'll tell you what. If you take this part of East Africa, <laughs> I'll take this, 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 and also this. Damn. Okay, yeah. I mean, listen, they had the fleet to protect all this shit. Germany, I, I don't think they did. They had one good ship that I've, I remember about. So, yeah. Huh. 
If you refuse, I will use my superior naval force yeah. to make your life a living hell. What are you gonna do about it? Straight up. Can't do shit about it. Uh, no. you know, Vas, you make an outstanding I argument. I like the accent. The accent's good, though. Oh, shit, he grew the mustache. Oh, yeah, how did that go for you? He, he. How did that go for you, Germany? I mean, we were right there with you, Bulgaria. So, I, we know how it went for you. It Hello, didn't go well. Hello, Sultan Hamad bin Tabaini. <laughs> I own this island now. Any objections? Oh, God. You sure? Okay, yeah. nice. But wait a minute. If the British seized ownership of the like island, a vassal. why is the Sultan still here? To once again okay. avoid any unnecessary warfare, which we certainly wouldn't want to happen, they kept the Sultan in place to create the illusion that the Zanzibaris were still governed by their good old slave-loving Sultan. Though, in reality, he was more like a puppet of the British to control yeah, the population. Makes sense. As long as the local Sultan would listen to the British, nothing bad would ever happen. And he's dead. Oh, How did shit. he die? Suddenly. AKA probably poisoned by his cousin, oh. Khalid bin Bargash. Not Gosh, the first time, not the last, by brother. A family relative? We have never seen that before in history. Yeah. All right, so the Sultan is dead, which means the British <laughs> lost their oh, puppet. God. Very upsetting. Not war triggering upsetting, but still pretty bad. Just make the next dude a puppet. How hard Time can to it get be? a new Sultan elected. Already done it like a thousand Here times. Here are our two choices. Okay, who we have? We have Hamoud bin Mohammed, a pro-British, anti-slavery candidate. Damn, good or for the British. Or Khalid bin Bargash, the same dude who poisoned the previous Sultan. Damn. And not to mention, really didn't like the British. Why did he hate? I wonder why. What reason could he possibly have to hate the British? Hate the British so much? <laughs> well, when Ali bin Said, the Sultan before the poisoned uh -huh. one died, died. The British, just like now, had two choices. A pro-British, oh, anti-slavery candidate, or Prince Khalid bin Bargash. Khalid was the only son of a previous sultan, which made him a prince and, in his opinion, the successor of the throne. Mm. The British didn't think so, and favored Hamid bin Tuwaini a lot more. Khalid Did really didn't him? like that, and the response to the British denying his sultanship stormed the palace and barricaded himself inside till the British gave him the throne. Luckily, the British managed to. Sm I don't think that's how it works, brother. I don't. I don't. Move took the way to Khalid to giving up the throne anyway, so unnecessary blood wasn't shed. Aww. But now, the same thing happened to Khalid again, and he wasn't about to let his soldiership be taken away oh, for a second time. So, after hearing the British favored Hamoud bin Mohammed over him, he once again, <laughs> though now with over 3,000 oh, men and women, damn. stormed the palace and locked themselves inside. So, people are fans of him, or. More like they probably were not fans of the British. The British initially tried to once again sweet talk Khalid into leaving the palace. <laughs> but Khalid cookies. had enough of the British and Shut flat him. out ignored them this oh. time. This was extremely problematic for the colonizer, as they had to get a sultan in power. That is a wild sentence though. This was extremely problematic for the colonizer. Boo fucking That food. aligned with their ideals. <laughs> After asking Khalid to leave again, presumably now with a bouquet of flowers, <laughs> the British turned back to Admiral Harry Rawson. Ah, shit. So, yes, yeah, sir. This bloke in the palace is not getting out. You think maybe you could somehow convince him to leave? Yeah, just yeah, put the no ships. Worries, mate. I got you. I'll be right there first thing in the morning, and uh, for no reason whatsoever. Please evacuate all British citizens oh, and merchants God. from the island, okay? Oh, God, please tell me he's not gonna bomb the fucking harbor or whatever with the ships. See you tomorrow. Oi, mate, my name is Harry. And oh, those God. are my five ships. We give you one final hour to leave, or we will do it the good old-fashioned way, all right? Which is boom, Whereas boom, boom. Khalid responded, and I quote, We have no intentions of leaving, and we do not believe you would open fire on us. Why? Wait, oh, I'm... Why, why do you believe they would not open fire on you? Why? <laughs> not sure if you should call our claims a bluff, mate. Yeah. One final hour. Do not be a hero. Why do you believe so that? So to his ships, Harry went, waiting for Khalid and his 3,000 <laughs> supporters <laughs> to leave the <laughs> Is that a fucking <laughs> of tea on the wall god damn it Alice. That's but as time grew closer to 9 a.m there were no signs of surrendering instead the british noticed the oh, zanzibari rebels men the one shore battery they had and the, that a zanzibari the one shore battery they had bari warship began to position itself a within the formation of the five ships very questionable behavior i sure wonder why they are doing that 
Oh, hey, would you look at the time? It's time for... Oh, my God. War. The shortest war. The gunboats Raccoon, Trush, and Sparrow simultaneously Sparrow. opened fire at the palace, where Trush's first shot immediately destroyed oh. the only man shore... Okay, that's GG FF15, brother. I... Yeah, that that's fucked. Better <laughs> they have. Even though the 3,000 supporters heavily what fortified are they gonna themselves do? in the palace... Yeah, the British... how they cannot attack the ships with anything? What are they gonna do? Throw rocks at the ship? Shoot the ship? Yeah, good luck with that shit. High explosive shells obliterated oh, the barricades God. and caused massive fires throughout the palace, trapping thousands of supporters oh. in the toxic smoke. At 5 past 9 a.m., so three minutes after the shelling started, the only warship of the Zanzibaris started to lay fire. I mean, listen, I respect the bravery and the stupidity you need, because you need a little bit of both. Maybe a lot of both. Fire onto the big cruiser that Admiral Rawson was on. They do anything However, to However, due to the very outdated weaponry and questionable battle ethics, they didn't even battle manage to it. create a dent in the ship. So Damn. The St. George laid fire oh, back God. and sunk the enemy ship in approximately four shots. They sunk their entire navy. For some navy. reason, a couple minutes <laughs> later, two ship, small steam launches came to try <laughs> to take down the truck. <laughs> These dudes were badass. I'll be honest with you. I... Rush, but they did it with rifles? What? <laughs> Needless to say, they were disposed of Aww. really quickly as well. God and damn it. that was all the naval defenses that the Zanzibaris had. Now what? what followed was 30 minutes of over of 500 shelling? high explosive shells continuously That's fired fuck. upon the palace. Till one brave Zanzibari climbed up to the roof to take down the rebellers flag. And then the war ended. Oh. Yep. The entire war, the shortest war in history, ended in just like 38 40 minutes. minutes 30? Oh, with 30 over 500 minutes. casualties on the Zanzibari side, Damn. and only one sailor hurt on the British side. Presumably okay, I got a question. How the fuck did that motherfucker get hurt? What did you get hurt by? Did you fall? Did you trip? Probably by accidentally dropping a shell on his own foot. Oh. In the end, the Anglo-Zanzibar <laughs> War was the shortest and one of the most one-sided wars in our entire history. Damn. Wait a minute, what happened to Khalid? Yeah, what happened well, to a dude? Well, he ran off. Oh. Five minutes into the shelling, he just left with his rich buddies and sought refugee at the German embassy, leaving oh. his thousands of supporters, you fucking asshole. to die God in the palace. Damn. I mean, Bro, not surprised. Uncool. Not After cool at all. War, Especially Khalid considering how brave his soldiers were, his marines. They stormed the, the ship. Side of Africa, where he not really. To live Almost tried life. to. Still, he Damn. got captured by the Allies, who were liberating and possibly trying to take more for themselves in Africa from the Germans in World War I. Damn. And got sent to exile to the same island that they sent Napoleon to. Oh, bro. Wrote, he does not deserve that. That's Napoleon. So he then, like, what did Napoleon do? Oh, shit, done. What did this motherfucker do? Be a bitch. And sent dozens of fuck. personal letters to Churchill, begging to be sent home. <laughs> Whereas the sicker man responded by sending him to Kenya, where he died. Nice. Epic troll. Damn. Anyway, 20 minutes after the war ended, Hamoud bin Mohammed ascended to become a sultan Weapon, slavery. and slavery was forever oh, abolished shit. in Zanzibar. Good this ending. This is the bizarre 38 minutes Kinda. war that caused way, way too many deaths. Damn. Well, that was that. Let me know what you think about the fastest war in history. 38 minutes and 500 people dead. Yikes. Anyway, I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this. Let me know if you should wish to check out some new other history things. Put them in the comments or Discord, whatever. Bless. I'll see y'all next time. Okay, like, comment, subscribe, and bye, everybody. Have a good day.